Uh, hello everybody, and this here. In this video, I'll talk about how I created this particular building and just uh, comment over the time lapse of this uh, sketch. So let's check it out. I've also used a lot of alphas from textures.com and you can download 15 free alphas from there per day. I spent a lot of time picking the right alphas, uh, going through all of them. I uh, spent like almost a couple hours, so you can see the whole list of links of to those textures, to those particular materials in the description. So I have this very basic <coughs> starting point, again, a leftover from my really old sketch, and now I want to kind of dress it up a little bit and do a proper makeover. This time I want to have I want to have the front facade and back facade. In some of those buildings, I only do the front and maybe the back is something else. So you can see here I'm creating this uh, big blob tool that will allow me to create you know to apply stencil and create an extra facade uh, that will be kind of covering the whole uh, back wall. I think I changed it quite a bit later on. And I duplicated that and moved it to the front. Kind of fill in the bottoms uh, using blob tool, creating the floor. Going to the silts. You can see some of the parts are hanging in the air, so I use the voxel height to hide and I just trim in the building, removing some parts which I don't like. And I often use the voxel height at, at the depths, so it doesn't, I don't go on a voxel height the whole thing, but it just at certain depth. Uh, and you can do it if you use activated on plane tool and you right click on a certain depth, and that's uh, pretty handy. Building some kind of little elements. You can see here again using a voxel hide at a depth, so I'm not I'm just hiding a bit. And then I'm using a blob on top and I use blob a couple of times just to create a thicker thicker one to make it uh, cover everything. Uh, make, making some columns. Here I also have a bit of a mixture of styles. So the left part will be more like, like a concrete, the middle part is more like a bit of a like squatter type slammy, and the back part is also you know, quite different. And playing the position for instance, stencils, just uh, applying them and see how they affect the stuff and it's looking better or not. Now using the uh, bricks, brick stencil, and I just kind of drop it all over the place where the, where it doesn't even it shouldn't really belong. Some concrete. This was some concrete patterns actually. And again, coming from textures.com, a free alpha. And then I use a move brush to add a bit more regularity to this and I break down this, just moving it up and down ever so slightly. Or push it, you know, use one of those standard alphas and push it a little bit. Uh, so all of that stuff doesn't look good, so we just then uh, jump and use something else. But I test them out 
all the time. So this dot uh, alpha I use quite a bit in my other videos as well. It's good for damage. You can see it creates damage that looks like planks. And you can see here, uh, the radios picked up the building at the bottom, so I didn't like that. I had, I had the brush was too big, so I decided to pick up everything. So I decided to split uh, the top of the roof, so I can then use this f f tool with like a free form. So I'm not afraid that it's going to catch the building. So yeah, then I tried to do, create a, like reinforcing planks on top that will help hold the longer planks in um, in shape at bay. Trying to get some cleaner shapes as well in the back. So like I, I drop the details, drop the details, and then on top I introduce the clean shapes. I would say it's kind of like I'm trying to fix my arrows that I shouldn't have applied the stencil to the whole thing. Uh, but what I like to do is again, like layering this damage, you know, you drop a stencil that you kind of try to fix it with another tools so and then you drop something else and it will create more, more, more history. The more you do stuff like that. So I decided to create just a standalone kind of um, piece that with the stencil I create this grill that could have been used to plant uh, like an ivy. Could be like a decorative piece that creates shadow. And again, I'm trying to create this kind of slime and sludge using this brush that really melts uh stuff down which is pretty cool really cool effect could be uh, could be some type of materials that start to melt in uh, if it's in a hot climate and in intense heat and sun the stuff can start to melt and start to drip down it can be stuff that's been pouring from the roof and uh, damage the materials they also start to melt and drip down so now i'm trying to paint some trees so I use the cow brush to start with. I just need to drop something to start with. And better effect, uh, better way of doing it is like use the cow brush and use the grow brush. And I, to be honest, I kept forgetting about it all the time. Uh, so in this case, I tried to do everything with the cow brush, but the cow brush creates a lot of noise that is floating in the air, which is really quite annoying. So now I want to use the sphere tool. I think I know I'm actually using voxel hide, voxel hide to like remove some of those floating bits that I look pretty fake. And I'm uh, drawing some big equipment, like could be an aircon unit or electrical box. And now it crashed. It crashed and I lo lost a lot of work. So I was thinking about should I cut it, but I was thinking, no, oh, it's kind of worth showing that I, I will lose work and it's pretty cold all the time, to be honest. Um, it's getting better now. I think what happened, I used the blob tool in the wrong plane, which now is uh, more or less fixed in the newest version. It's pretty cold because yeah, I talked to the developers and it was really annoying that I was experiencing quite a few crashes because I was using the blob tool in the wrong plane and it would just generate a huge mesh and it would just crash through the code instantly. And I lost like, um, probably like seven minutes of work, five minutes of work, which is just quite a lot of time, uh, especially if you do this kind of intense, like concept design stuff that you have to think a lot and then you like just lose it and you just have to redo everything. It's so annoying. The 3D code auto save is kind of okay. It's so, so, 
Sometimes record autosave is pretty annoying because when you deal with heavy scenes with 50 million triangles, 100 million triangles, it's really cold. will hang your computer, will froze the whole scene for like a minute. Not a minute, but 20, 30 seconds, which is super annoying if it does it every five minutes. Uh, and sometimes I really, um, it's really tempting to turn off 3D code, but that's it's really good. It's really tempting to turn off autosave, but you know I have to I have to keep it running because I never know when the 3D code is going to crash. So I've created the back sides so since the crash, and now I'm using some. I want to create some cables uh, using the curve tool. I use both, I use the curve tool and I use just hand drawing curves because hand drawing, it can make it a little bit more kind of random. Uh, but with the curve, you can make a really long curve along the building. And I, I kind of idea that came about with this particular house is was like making more of this extra element that will be like the extra facade, the front, ele front elements that well, create more like a layered style, layered illusion. So we have uh, multiple uh, like panels and tilts and holding elements in front. I created like a a bit of a fence on the top, like a, not really a fence, but a kind of barrier on the top. And I have this roof, which is pretty trash roof, is like a lot of layering elements and such. And I was all right with that because it's uh, again it shows a bit of history of the building, the past few few iterations of uh, modeling and sculpting, and that contributes to this uh, look of uh, an old uh, kind of trash Islamic house or a sh shanty build building. So destroying the wood, again what I like about 3D code that you can do this so easily, you can just create the holes in the thin air um, with an alpha. Doing some little bit of cleanup. I'm kind of removing some of the parts of the old sketch, so I'm thinking about what I knew. Can I? What else can I put there? And when I say old, like the original one was done about a year ago, and it was even more than a year ago, like during during some COVID times. Well, sometimes I have some ideas that work in a certain way, but I don't really know how how to implement them. For example, there was no Unreal Five back like two years ago. So uh, there was no way you know, to say build a city out of these big chunks of geometry, and uh, now it became a, a possibility that they could actually just throw it in all in real and have more of like a concept type city uh, and show it happening, uh, show little animations in Unreal. Little detailing, little detailing. 
here and there. Some visual noise that should make architectural sense in terms of that could have been some kind of bracket to hold something. And again, an idea here is that it could have been a uh, building, building that was in a good state, but all of the time became or got more or less abandoned, or the neighborhood got poorer. So we started to uh, bring in people who just squat around in the area and you know use some cheap materials uh, that I would put on the walls and um, build it up. Build it up, build it all up quickly, and therefore you create a bit of history and create a more of a shanty looking uh, building, a bit more abandoned looking building. And I hid everything for a few seconds just to look at how, how it compares to other buildings. I don't know, I have a whole bunch of time lapses describing how I made other buildings. I think I have like 30 in total, but I'm um, 30 buildings, but not really time lapses. Some this is way, way less. And that's really about it. So thank you for watching. In my bigger tutorial module town design in 3D code, I explain how I use all the tools in detail by chapters. It's all broken down and also cover how I texture it. So if you're curious about it, go check it out. The link is in the top and in the description. And thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one. If you have extra questions, please join the 3D Code Discord. The link is well right here or in the description. Because if you have some questions, it's better to ask it there. Usually people know more about technical stuff in 3D Code than me actually.